Hey Pit Masters, what's up? Today we're going to be making a venison roast. Oh, look at this beauty. It's a whole back from the deer. I saw this and I just had to have it. Look at how beautiful it is. We got everything on it. The backbone's in there, the ribs are in there. We got the tenderloins, we got the loins, we got the whole shebang. This thing is freaking awesome. And you know what I came up with? We're gonna put it on the spit. Are those the balls? <laughs> no, they're not the balls. They're the ends of the tenderloin. This is the best part, Morrison. This here, the most tender meat that's on our deer. There's just floppy bits hanging off the ends. This butcher did a good job of leaving them on. All right, let's put it on the spit. No more fooling around. Barbecue is serious business. You need something which is considerable size because we're talking about a big back. Now the problem if we wanna, if we wanna skewer it on the spit is that the backbone is running straight here in the center, right here in the core. If you look at this, this is the center right here. We can't push our spit in there. So we have to go by the side so it will be off center. This part is what's called the saddle and the most of the meat is off the loin on top of it so what we're going to do is we're going to go close to the loin and go underneath there with our spit as close to the bone as we possibly can jam it in there and work your way to the end make sure that it stays connected and runs along the bone it might be a little bit of fiddle work but in the end you'll get there there we go is ready to go on a barbecue. Gorgeous, right? The main thing is that we center it properly because in the process we are going to use our back burner. I've got my Napoleon already running at a temperature of 150 degrees Celsius. As you can see, our back burner is straight in the middle. That's where we want our deer roast to sit. As you can see, we're a little off to the sides. We're going to move it so it's directly in front of the back burner. Now we are going to secure our roast. We are going to turn on our rotisserie and we'll let it spin. Drizzle on a little bit of olive oil and spread it out. We're going to do this on both sides. We'll sprinkle on some fleur de sel. This is easy dissolving sea salt. And finally some fresh ground black pepper. We have both our outer burners on and the roast is in the center. So we have indirect heat. We're going to let it rotate, close the lid at a temperature of 150 degrees Celsius. We're going to be cooking this until it comes up to a temperature of 40 degrees Celsius. While our deer is roasting, we're going to be grilling some pumpkins. Because it's the season, you know, pumpkins taste fantastic. And especially when they come off the grill. So why not make use of the opportunity having the grill on Put some pumpkins underneath catching those drippings we'll cut them in half there we go and we're going to take out the seeds now we're going to slice them again once we cut them into these thin slices we're going to put them on the grill so we'll place them directly underneath the deer any dripping that comes off the meat will drip onto our pumpkin we'll close the lid and in the meantime, we are going to make a sauce to brush onto our roast while it's sizzling away. We'll need a pan, half a kilo of butter. Ooh, you thought it was gonna drop in there, right? It will. Looks like a big lump now, but when we brush it on, it's gonna shrink down, it's gonna melt away with all the goodness that we're gonna put in there as well. We're gonna chop fine two shallots, two garlic cloves, a handful of fresh parsley. We'll add that to the pan. Then we'll add some cranberries and the juice of half a lemon. And we'll finish it off with a little bit of salt and pepper. Now we'll put the pan on the fire. Turn on the gas. Let it flow for five seconds. And then fire up our sizzle zone. We'll let the butter and all of the goodness melt down until the flavors are fully blend. Rain, rain, rain. Every time, every freaking time, it rains! Ah. Luckily, I've got everything on wheels. Mm. We'll just move it over. The barbecue can stand in the rain, no problem. But me personally, you know, I have this delicate haircut. If it goes in the rain, it starts to fall apart. So I'd rather keep it as it is. I don't have a, a waterproof cap like you. Seriously, this butter is gonna be really good. 
because of the cranberries it's gonna provide us with a little bit of its sanginess and a little bit of acidity and when we start brushing it on to our rib roast ooh, it's gonna be so good you can clearly smell the garlic right now look at it it's absolutely beautiful so what we're going to do is we're going to check on the temperature of our roast and then if we're far enough we're going to turn on the back burner. Wow, that's starting to look good. Let's check the temperature of our loins. Still a little bit on the low side, but I think we can do it. Let's just turn on the back burner. Turn on the gas. Ignition. Back burner is on. The back burner consists of two elements. The burner and the metal part in front of it stainless steel by heating up that metal part it produces infrared rays and those infrared rays are going to make the perfect roast just look at it we're going to turn the back burners to the low and we're going to let this slowly cook while basting on our sauce brush it on look at it all right it's time our roast is done time to take it off our grill and let it rest it looks so good. Look at the meard effect that we've got on our roast. Nice and brown, the fat is rendered down. Oil, all of the flavor has gone on to the meat from our sauce. And our little treat, our little secret, our little extra. Look at the pumpkin underneath catching all the dripping. It's full of meat juices, butter, herbs. This is gonna be a really good treat. Oh, wow, look at it. Oh, what a beauty. Man, venison can be so good. Take it off the spit. Now, before we continue, we need to let this rest. I want to make sure all the fluids are going back into position. It finishes cooking and then we're going to start taking it apart. Oh, it smells like venison roast. Who could have thought? Let's slice into it. Let's take a look inside. First gonna work my way along the back and then along the ribs. Look at that, what a beauty. One whole loin. Now let's do the other side. Again, along the back and then work your way down with the knife, following the bones. Make an incision just above the ribs. Now we've got the two loins. Now we'll take a look at the tenderloins. Beautiful tenderloin and another one. I'm not quite sure what these are called in English, but they're juicy, they're tender. Man, they're so good. Well, look at how good our roast turned out. We got a nice brown golden color. We cooked it to perfection. It's nice and juicy still. Let's slice into it. Let's call it pitmaster privilege. Oh. Oh. Mmm, man, it's tender. This stuff is really, really good. It's not overpowering. This is the good stuff. Here, Marcia, give it a try. So different than, than beef. It's completely different to beef. It's nothing like beef at all. It has that sweetness. It's just completely something else. I don't know what to say. You gotta try it just to know what it is. And man, taking a tender pit like this, mmm. Mm. Now let's slice up our loins. Look at that. Look how good this looks, man. Absolutely gorgeous. I wish you all were here to taste this. This stuff tastes so good. And mainly it's the flavor of the meat that, that is really strong, but it's also really sweet and nice. It's not like gamey at all. So putting on a little bit of butter with some herbs in it, it just makes the difference on the outside, but on the inside, you get that true meat flavor. Mm. Oh my God. Come on, Martian. What's happening? Come on, Martian. Come on, Marshall. That's not my name. It's good, right? It's really tender. We should ask Denise what she thinks of it. Denise! She's always running off to some place. I don't know. Since we are enjoying it so much, I want to share with you guys our little secret, our little treat that we cooked up. This is our beautiful pumpkin. You can serve this on the side. Mm. Goes perfect with our roast. It's creamy and it's sweet as well. 
it has these autumn flavors. And if you use them and bind them together to create this beautiful recipe, then you're in luck. Come on, we were looking for you. Yeah. It's eating time. Give this a try. Did you ever try deer before? No. Okay, so first time deer. It's completely different to beef or pork. So don't expect beef or pork. It's completely new. Give it a try. Can I smell it? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. You know what that means? We don't get a dance today. No dance? See, no dance. But it's not really strong in flavor, oh, is it? it's pretty okay. See, it's pretty okay. But you have to love deer. My personal preference, I like this. This is good venison. So I'm happy with it. Turns out good. Denise, mm, give it a number between uh, one and ten. Mm, seven and a half. This oh, is pretty good, right? that's pretty good. I hope you guys enjoyed it as well. So if you did, then leave us a big thumbs up and a comment down below. And we want to say a special thank you to our Patreons and YouTube members. And of course, the notification squad. So, see you guys next time. Until then, it's makkelijk. Keep on grilling. That's right. Finger licking good. Mm. Woo wee! Sweet mother of venison. What? Sweet mother of venison. Okay. Why are you walking to me, Martian? Martian. Marshall. That's Martian. not my name. That's not my name. Mm. That's, mm. Not, my That's name. not my name. They call me Marston. They call me Marshall. <laughs>